Hi everybody, this is my daughter Rose. And this is my mom Angie. Welcome to Revolutions in Health. We're here to bring you all the latest in health, wellness, and nutrition. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button below. We have new videos every Thursday and you don't want to miss them. That is right. Especially today. Yeah, and we want to see you, so <laughs> hit the subscribe button. First show of the year. Yes, Happy New Year everybody. It is 2020. So futuristic. That's right, it is. Yeah, yeah, it does sound futuristic. So I know that everyone has a New Year's resolution. A lot of it is, I want to get more fit. I want to lose, lose more 20 weight. Pounds. Yeah. And so today's show is dedicated to dieting. Like what, what diets do we, have we tried? What do we think? What do we like? What have our results been? Mm -hmm. So we just wanted to share that with you. Um, yeah, today we're going to give our diet reviews of some of the top diets out there, the most popular ones. This is, of course, our opinion on them. If they work right. for us or not, we hope some of them work for you. Always check with your doctor before you try any of the diets we talk about. But yeah, let's jump in. Let's jump in and talk about it. Um, so the first one we have on our list is calorie counting. Now, I've done calorie counting, I think, since I was 13. <laughs> And I can tell you that because I'm not super tall, uh, my calorie counting is, my calorie count is usually around 1,200 calories a day. That's hard. That is hard because it's not a lot of calories. So, you know, I, for me, I have done it for so long in my life, but it's not my favorite because it, it's very slow to lose weight, which is okay. But the, the starvation factor is not good because you're hungry, you get a headache, yes. and you can't think because you're so hungry. I don't know. For me, it wasn't like the best on the planet, but I do think that calorie moderation is a good plan for most people. Yeah, I mean, you should have a good basis of how much you should eat a day. It's good to check yeah. what your calorie counts are for the day mm -hmm. and then factor in your exercise. Right. And we often found it's better to exercise a little more than starve yourself all day. Like, right. It's difficult. Especially like if you do weights, like if you yes. do free weights at home, you can get yourself a little set from the sporting goods store. Mm -hmm. And that really increases your metabolism. So if you do some free weights, do some walking, yes. you know, you can fit it into your schedule. It's really flexible. You don't have to pay for a gym. You don't have to do a lot of driving to and from, you know, and that no makes excuses. it, yeah, it makes it easier for you to actually follow through. Yes. Yeah. But, and oh, and there's an app that we do use when mm -hmm. we've um, calorie counted, and that is MyFitnessPal. That is fantastic because it works like a food diary, mm -hmm. and so you really can keep track, and you can scan like your packaged foods especially that has a barcode you can scan it and it gives you the calorie count the fat count so you can really see what you've eaten you can even count like it's really easy to count on there you can like scan the doritos bag and say that you've had six doritos and it will count the calories for it without you having to mathematically figure right. out how many calories you've had right which is really good. It's really helpful. But I remember when you did it for uh, a while. I'm banned from calorie counting. You are. I'm sure it works for many of you, but for me, I was too... Obsessed. Yeah, obsessive mm. about it, and I would like try to eat as little calories as possible during the day, and then at night, I will have gotten to like maybe 600 calories in the day, and then I'm starving, Dumping. and I have a headache, and I just feel gross after that. And then I am just like eat a whole bunch and then... You eat for like two people. Yeah, I eat like a thousand <laughs> calories in one sitting and then it doesn't help. Then right. All around, it's a bad experience. So if you're able to not do that where you're like, oh, I'm going to save all my calories because I'm going to have this, you know, really amazing dinner. Really, you need to eat all during the day and, you know, Spread space it, it and have your snacks and do everything, but just eat a very nice little portion of dinner because you can go back and eat it tomorrow again yeah. so you don't have to have this you know like this huge supper and you're going to be going to bed so you don't want that much right and that's bed. that's the bad part about eating all your calories at the end of the day because mm -hmm. you're going to be going to sleep and then it just goes to all the places you right. didn't want it to go to 
And one of the ones that you found that really works though mm -hmm. is our next one. Right. And it's, I really like the low carb program. I know a lot of people like low carb, Atkins, uh, what is that? Oh, South Beach Diet. Mm -hmm. All of them are kind of the same animal because you're counting Absolutely. your carb grams. And I do like that because it enables you to eat a good amount of food. Mm -hmm. You don't feel hungry. You don't feel, you know, non-energized. And I do feel like with these diets, if you lose more inches, because it so. burns up your you know, fat stores better because you're not feeding yourself a lot of sugar. Mm -hmm. So that part I really think is effective. Like if you're doing a low carb program and you're exercising, you know, modestly, not a lot, yeah. like doing some light free weights, like I said earlier, in a couple of 20 minute walks or 10 minute walks, whatever you can get in to move around and maybe some stretching, you'll see some results. I feel like with the keto too, it's really, or any of the low carb ones, because keto is pretty similar to low carb too. It is. Is it's easy to maintain when you go out. You can still order food yes. that's going to fit within that diet. You don't feel deprived. It's not weird or embarrassing to order like a hamburger protein style or things like that. It's no. very easy to keep up with. It is. And it seems to help you lose weight in areas that are hard to lose weight because it's burning the fat that's sitting there. You're not just like, right. some diets, at least for me, I noticed when I've done calorie counting, I'll lose weight like in my face or like the lower part of my arms, or but I'm face. not actually, yeah, like yeah. you don't lose it in the important parts like your belly or like your thighs or. Right, you always want to lose it in your thighs or your belly yeah. as women or, you know, yeah. waist. Yeah, but and I feel like the keto and the low carb, you actually lose weight where you want to lose weight like it really helps you're obviously not going to spot reduce but like it no, helps. but I, I think that it, it does it yeah. burns like the sugar mm -hmm. stores and then you start to burn the fat stores so then you really do lose weight where you want to lose it mm -hmm. and not everywhere else that you didn't want to lose it so for me I, I think for you too i enjoy the keto and the low carb but i do have to eat some carbs because mm -hmm. i exercise a lot you do. Either way, it makes me sleepy and kind of lethargic. Yeah, and foggy. I think yeah. Foggy thinking. Mm -hmm. But um, we do do the low carb right yes. now, and I've we've been doing it I think since like June, and my husband and I have been you know doing this together, and really increased energy, weight loss of course, mm -hmm. all in the right places, not you know in the wrong places, and the thing I like is that you don't have cravings. And you're not starving like between meals if like for me if i do calorie counting i have to have that snack with me starving. all the time otherwise i'm just so starving i feel shaky and in this with the low carb program it really kind of evens out your metabolism and your your cravings and you don't get really super hungry mm -hmm. so i love that but i know a lot of you are probably trying keto or you're on keto programs and it's a wonderful program the only thing I have a problem with, I know that they do the fat bombs and the really, you know, kind of yeah, fatty things. Extra. I can't, I don't know. I don't, my stomach can't handle all that fat. Um, if you can, that's wonderful. Um, and if it works for you, I know it does for many people and they're very successful in it. Well, for many, the fat bombs and things like that are supposed to be in the beginning to get you used to the keto. That's not supposed to right. be a long term eating snack. Thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. just to get you over the hump in the beginning right so you can get into a more stabilized um, blood sugar and then you won't need the fat bombs but you know for me I really didn't like the keto plan that way I like it more low, low carb but I've been reading about keto cycling and that sounds so interesting mm -hmm. it's like well, what does that exactly mean well on the plan that they were talking about you do your normal keto plan for six days and then on the seventh day, which is like your cheat day, you have you can eat up to 75 grams of carbohydrates. That's a lot. That that's a whole a lot. Bit. Going from zero to 75, that's a lot of carbs. And but they are saying, the the people that are, have doing you know research on it, they said that they don't know that that's the best idea because it can start to cause inflammation 
going from that zero to 75. It's such a, a shock for your body and you want yeah. to kind of have like a nice homeostasis of right whatever you're eating. Exactly. So, you know, I think that with the carb cycling, what you could do that might be a little bit easier in your body because then you don't have the 75 grams of carb shock is maybe incorporated into two separate you know um, carb days mm -hmm. instead of having one and maybe having you know a 35 or, or 40 grams and, and keeping it at a more like normal rate so you're not just shocking your body into mm -hmm. this you know glucose level that it's not used to so that's kind of interesting I thought I'd share that with you guys about yeah I think you like doing that I've kind of done that once I reach my weight then I'll start adding like a whole grain bread or you know something that has a little carby stuff like I do like the cauliflower pizza which has a little wheat flour it's really good it's good but it has carbs so I will just cycle it in a couple of days here and there instead of you know consuming it one day so oh and I know that you wanted to talk about another plan I also I really think Whole30 is really good because it's something that you do for 30 days mm -hmm. and you cut out, like the main ones are cutting out sugar, alcohol, grains, legumes, dairy, processed foods. I know that that sounds like a lot, but it's only for 30 days and you're basically cutting out all the inflammatory foods. And I think this is a really good diet to mm -hmm. kind of try to see if anything is like a problem for your body it's right. good to see because you're taking the dairy out then when you start reintroducing these items back you can see how you feel on those items so like maybe dairy is an issue for you maybe right. wheat is an issue for you maybe it's not even wheat maybe it's store-bought bread that has dough conditioners and all other kinds mm -hmm. of chemicals that's a problem for you but homemade food is fine okay. for you yeah homemade bread is fine so i found that to be really helpful in trying that and then other than that, I think the best diet of all is really just eating not processed foods right. and eating homemade foods. Like I eat homemade bread. I do eat dairy, but I'll eat mostly like yogurt and not have a lot of milk and things. Um, like cultured Yes, foods, having yeah. lots of probiotic foods that have naturally occurring good bacteria. Really good. And yeah, I think that kind of diet's more yeah. like effective because you're also feeling full from eating a wide variety of foods and also switching out your carbs for more like a fruit instead of a piece of bread or something like or that. Cake. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a fruit for dessert. Yeah. I think it's also kind of like a French diet, like where you have yogurt and fruit for dessert or you know you're having some cheese, mm -hmm. but you're not having massive amounts. You're just having a few bites of each thing and that way you have a wide variety of vitamins and minerals that you're getting right. as well. Well also if you eat that way you're eating more of a, a normal serving instead of getting the super sized servings. Like yes. I know that there for a while when we went through um, uh, your grandmother's uh, things uh, she had some plates from mm -hmm. way back like in the 40s or 50s and they were so small. And that was the dinner plate. That was, was the not dinner like plate. like a dessert or bread plate. Like right. It was just plate. a little bit bigger than the bread plate. And this was a dinner plate. And I feel like now our, you know, our dishes are so huge, mm -hmm. you know, to make this presentation. But really, then you end up filling it with food. Mm -hmm. So maybe just using plates that are just normal human size and mm -hmm. not like, you know, for giants. Maybe that is a, a good thought to do. You know, it will make your mind feel like you're eating more but really you're just getting a normal amount of food instead of the huge plates. And then you can still finish your plate because I know a lot of people are raised that you should finish your plate, mm -hmm. you shouldn't waste anything, it's not good to waste any food, and which it isn't, but at the same time, you wanna make sure your plate isn't so big that you have to finish it and that you weigh, you know, like a million pounds and that's not good either. <laughs> that's well, you wanna be healthy, you yeah. know, you eat a healthy amount of food. So, these are some of our tips and I hope they help you out with your dieting choices and also with just our little tips that work for us and what didn't work for us. Yeah, we'd love to hear your experiences with different diets. You know, have you tried the keto diet? Have you tried MyFitnessPal and counting calories? 
Do you follow Whole30? Have you? What are your experiences with it? We'd love to hear in the comments below. That's right. And don't forget to subscribe and we will see you next week. Yep. Take care. Bye-bye.